in a world where everything is digital, is on the internet, is out in the ether, printing our photography can be the culminating act, the final act in our practice of our craft. So here's the deal. A few years ago, we acquired a big Canon photo printer, which was probably made in like 2004 or something. So it's like 20 years old. And it was actually given to us for free by a neighbor, which is great. But it's been sitting in a closet for years now. And I decided to actually get this thing out, dust it off, and try to print some of the photos that I've been taking over the past year or so. And so I'm gonna show you the process of printing one of these photos on this old printer. And I'm also gonna talk about my thoughts on the significance of printing our photography in a digital age, in an age of the rise of AI. And so I hope you'll stick around through to the end if you're a photographer or somebody who potentially wants to get into photography. I think you'll find this pretty interesting. I'm growing my hair out and um, <laughs> I'm in that awkward phase where the hair is like not quite long enough, you know, to just kind of sit comfortably. And so we'll see if I have to put the hat on. So first things first, getting out the printer. Now this thing is massive. It's quite heavy and bulky and to be honest with you does not usually live in our apartment. It usually stays at one of our parents houses because it's just too big. So I got it set up and dusted it off really good and turned it on. And you know just so you're aware this bag of extra ink that we got with it has been really handy because as I've been setting up this printer I've had to check the ink levels and you know clean the ink cartridges and things like that and that's a crucial part of, of setting up and, and restarting any sort of old technology old printer that you have it's just making sure that it runs smoothly and that's something I'll talk a little bit more about later but once you have it set up you have it turned on you turn to your computer and basically on the computer the only real things that I had to do because I already had the photographs edited I just had to choose which photographs I wanted to focus on. After that, it's just making sure that you are very carefully loading paper properly into the printer and then making sure you're putting the right settings on the computer when you're about to print, right? So there's all sorts of stuff like different color profiles that, that I don't know a whole lot about and frankly, I can't even dive into it too much just because the drivers for this printer that I got don't even work anymore you can't get drivers for you know the newest laptops so i'm just kind of winging it and i'm using what settings i can see on the computer and so far i found something that works for me so you get the settings going you make sure the paper set up and you know there's this process with with printing flat most printers these days you feed the paper in through the top this one, when I'm using a very large 13 by 19 matte paper that is quite thick, so just so you know, I got some test paper that is kind of between 200 grams and 350 to 380 grams. So it's quite thick paper. It's like graphite sketching paper. And it's really nice because it's nice and sturdy. It has some weight to it. In fact, I can show you one right here. It's kind of got a nice weight to it but you have to lay it flat. Once you do that, and once you have all the settings correct on the computer, you can click print. And this is where the really, really satisfying part comes in because this printer is very, very good. You know, these old printers, if you can get them to work, well, they're great. Like they have everything they need, they work. So when you're printing flat like this, in the front tray it's called, it's scooting along inch by inch or rather almost millimeter by millimeter depending on how high of a quality you print at and it's very very satisfying because you have to wait it's not instantaneous <laughs> it's not like take the picture you know get it on computer print it in in two seconds you've got this whole setup process and then the printing is very slow as well so it's quite a rewarding process and then at the end you have your print this is actually the the print that you saw me printing there, and I love it. This is a photograph that I took in the Olympic National Park in the Olympic Mountains in Washington State, and I took it from this overlook over the Elwha River, and I was using my 100-400 to zoom lens, 
and basically reaching down, zooming in on a spot. And this was in winter when there was snow and ice around the Elwa River. And I just loved taking pictures from a higher vantage point because it gave you these unique angles and you got to see more of the shapes and the lines. Anyway, I made a whole video about this trip that you can go check out, but this is the photo and actually I'm really, really impressed. Now, I should let you know, I didn't just turn the printer on and this came out. I've tested this printer a few times and in fact, I can show you some of these test prints that I have that did not turn out so well. So, for example, this one. This photo was supposed to be pretty much all this shade of yellow that you see towards the top. Okay, and as you can see, for some reason the ink was not working right and I made sure there was full ink cartridges. So, you have to do some test runs and my mistake was just printing full on these big sheets of paper without doing a smaller test batch with the ink. So something to think about for yourself. Don't just go out there and start printing tons of sheets of paper because this stuff is fairly expensive. Let's see if I can find another one here. Another blue one. And you know, it's not, maybe not a perfect print for the photograph as you see it on my computer, but the blues look really, really good. And I was quite pleased with this. And you know, this one compared to this one, the only real difference I think is that this one over here, I printed with more sharpness. Whereas this other one, I don't think that I added any sharpness to the print. So those are some of the photos that I printed so far. I'm probably gonna do several more with the test paper that I have left, but I wanna turn now to the significance that I feel printing our photos has for photographers in 2024. Now, we all use social media, we use smartphones, we use laptop computers, and everything is digital, right? And it can be kind of a weird feeling to say, I want to print out my art. I want to print out a photograph because where we share our art is actually mostly online. In fact, it's probably 99% online. However, for me, one of the cool things about your artwork is that sometimes you wanna display it in your home. And so really the biggest purpose for me here is to display it in my home. And the other big purpose is if I wanna give a gift to somebody. So over the holidays, I had some little like photo cards made and they said happy Christmas on the back. But these were really, really fun to print. I used an online service for these and it's basically taking that concept of like some sort of a holiday card or holiday gift and obviously blowing it up much bigger. It's nice when you can do it at home yourself because then you can print only what you want and you can really refine it and, and make sure that the print is of the highest quality that you want. So that's cool. But in terms of the process, the photographic process, we have planning out our photos, or planning out our photo shoots, where we wanna go, what we wanna capture, getting inspired. We have all of that kind of pre-photography stuff. Then we have going out on location, especially if you do landscape photography, you have to drive somewhere, you have to hike somewhere, whatever it is, and you spend a lot of time outside trying to capture the photos that you want in the conditions you want. And then at the end, you get it back on your computer, you edit, and then you share online. Well, this actually feels like the final, final step. It feels like the culmination of all that work when you get a photograph printed and you can get something like this one, which is one of my favorites that I've printed so far. One of my favorite scenes that I've, I've photographed, again on the Olympic Peninsula at the Ho Rainforest. Just the golden coloring of these leaves and of the moss on these trees it's just one of my favorite scenes and I'm so happy that I've been able to mostly capture it, I think, in a print. This is the first time I printed this image and it's pretty awesome. It's really the end of the road. It's the culmination, the final act of photography for me. And when you can put it up on your wall, when you can think about where you wanna place it, that you know, you'd see it most often, that would hold a special significance to you and you can walk by it every morning and be reminded that you created something that you made something that was beautiful. What could be better than that, all right? That's why we do it. Now, in the world of everything being digital with the rise of AI, I think this sort of thing holds even more significance for me because it's something you can touch. 
AI photography, AI videography, social media, it's kind of all out there in the ether, right? It's away from you ultimately. And this is something I can hold in my hands and touch and get close to physically. And you can't replace that. That's irreplaceable. You know, your smartphone, putting it on your phone, this little device doesn't do it justice. But being able to print it fairly large and have it in your home, have it in your hands, it's hard to describe, but it's that tactile thing that we're missing in this digital age. So I think that printing our photographs has a huge role to play in how rewarding we find our craft. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video interesting or insightful in some way. If you want to see more, consider subscribing to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one.